and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Sarah Eppaport. Our top stories today. Police reassure students after report of sexual assault near university. Winchester is an incredibly safe place to live, work and study. Stephen Fry joins the battle for Middle Earth Pub. In sport, Totten on course for a hat trick of cup victories. Fast and furious, the car quicker than a bullet speeds into Southampton. Police are continuing their investigation into an alleged sex attack on a Winchester student. Our crime correspondent Eddie Jones reports. This eFit photo has been released of a man police wish to question over a possible sexual assault on Stanmore on the 29th of February. The attack on the 21-year-old woman is said to have taken place between 10.30 and 11.30 of a Wednesday evening. It was here at the corner of Cromwell Road and Lower Stanmore Lane that the alleged sexual assault took place. The female student was attacked from behind as she walked back from university campus. Police are keen to reassure Winchester residents that such incidents are very rare in the area. Winchester is an incredibly safe place to live, work and study. I feel actually quite lucky to have it as my beat. We have been doing some reassurance patrols um, just because of people's um, fear of crime, which is often higher than the actual levels of crime. Um, but there are quite a lot of patrols that happen anyway. Anyone with information should contact DC Ian Turner on 101 or contact Crime Stoppers anonymously. Edward Jones, Winchester News Online. A Lord of the Rings themed pub in Southampton has become national news after a number of groups are set up to save it. The Save the Hobbit campaign is being supported by celebrities such as Stephen Fry and hopes to change the mind of a Hollywood company who are trying to call time on the pub. Hattie Malam reports. The Hobbit. This pub has been training in Southampton for the last 20 years and is popular with locals and students alike. But now, this could all be about to change. Sol Zantz, a Hollywood company who owns the right to the Hobbit films, is taking legal action over copyright issues. The Hobbit's plight has gone global and attracted celebrity supporters thanks to social networking. On Twitter, Stephen Fry, who is currently in New Zealand on the set of the film, slammed what he described as pointless bullying. And on Facebook, the group set up by a Southampton student has over 17,000 likes. This has become such a battle of epic proportions that it's, it's become rather like the story of Lord of the Rings itself, actually, where the tiny hobbit and, and, and the evil dark lord um, from Hollywood is, is trying to stop us from um, doing what we're doing. These murals cost £2,000 each and will have to be painted over if the pub is rebranded. Not only will the pub have to pay thousands of pounds on the changes, but it will also lose out on trade during the transition. The worst case scenario would be if, if, if the pub were forced to shut because um, there weren't significant funds to either fight a legal campaign or even rebrand. But for now, the pub continues trading, the Facebook group keeps growing, and we can still enjoy signature cocktails like this scandal. A local tattoo artist has been pressuring the city council for five years to adopt the stricter approach to unsafe home tattooing. The council are now finally proposing to bring in a bylaw, which may bring an end to this dangerous practice. Felicity Houston has the details. Some people think the tattoos are stylish and attention-grabbing, but they can be expensive. Despite this, you might be prepared to pay a bit more at a licensed tattoo parlour such as this one to make sure that what you're getting is safe. But there's been growing concern that some people in Winchester have been tempted to go for cheaper tattoos offered by DIY tattooists at a potentially deadly cost. Just tattooing from buying your kits off eBay, don't do it. You're risking killing people. You might want to draw on them, but you are risking their lives. People might see the sealed, sterilised needles that come with the kits and feel quite safe. But as soon as this needle touches the inside of the tube, it's contaminated and poses a real risk of infection to the people receiving the tattoo. Winchester City Council have responded to the problem by proposing new bylaws which will enable them to act more swiftly upon unregulated tattooists. We don't know what the risk is and we are simply trying to make sure that there isn't a risk so that if it is done at home, that it's done in the same way that in the areas that we regulate it. The council is looking to adopt the laws later on this year. Felicity Houston, Winchester News Online, Winchester. Protests have taken place at the university today over rises in tuition fees and education cuts. The protests were small but vocal. While the government feels the rise in fees is justified, 
The protesters say a whole generation could be shut out of education. March is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, and according to Target Ovarian Cancer, the UK has one of the poorest survival rates in the developed world. Winnell spoke to a local woman who was diagnosed with the disease. It's hard um, when you know that it's, um, um, it's terminal in, at the end of the day, it, there's no cure. It's just a question of keeping me going for as long as possible. Maureen Ward from Hedge End is in the terminal stages of ovarian cancer. Maureen says women should have regular checkups because early diagnosis is crucial. She was diagnosed three years ago and one of the biggest challenges she faced was telling her family and friends. The other challenge is just to, to um, keep going uh, as, as, as normally as possible. I've actually given myself challenges outside of cancer. I've um, been learning the, um, the guitar, um, which I love, and um, also I did uh, take up um, uh, tango. Uh, Argentine tango, which I also love. If you or your family are suffering from ovarian cancer, you can visit Target Ovarian Cancer's website for more information. And now I'm here with George Barrage for the sport. How are all the local teams doing, George? Yes, there are some very exciting games last night as AFC Tossen had the chance to make the final of the Hampshire Senior Cup for the third year in a row. But first they had to beat Blue Square South strugglers Haven to Waterlooville. Henry Lewin Titt was at Wesley Park. AFC Totten played Haven to Waterlooville in the semi-final of the Hampshire Senior Cup, with the current cup holders, the Stags, trying to make it three finals in as many years. Haven started off on the front foot and could have taken the lead if it wasn't for a triple save from Grant Porter, keeping the scores level. Totten had a long-range effort at goal, but it didn't trouble the keeper. Haven had the best chance to open the scoring, but were denied by the post. Early in the second half, Haven't thought they'd taken the lead, but the assistant referee ruled the player offside. 16-year-old Jack Odam poked home a half volley from range to give Totten the lead. Ollie Palmer beat the Totten defence to a low cross to even the scores for the home team. With the game looking like it could go into extra time, a mistake from Beasley and goal let Ryan Moss scramble in a winner for the Stags. This win sees Totten marching through to a third final in a row, hoping to make it a hat trick of cup wins. Henry learned it, Winchester News Online. And Winchester City travelled to Fratton to face Moneyfields on Saturday, with this game expected to be one of the harder matches in their run in to the end of the season. But once again, the citizens were aiming for three points. Aaron Summers reports. Six wins. That's the number required for Wessex Premier League glory. And it's the Moneyfield Sports Ground in Fratton that welcomed visitors Winchester City on Saturday. In the game that was regarded as the citizens' toughest game in the season run-in, it was the Moneys who hit first. Steve Hutchings, following past the incited Roy Anderson, his 25th goal of the campaign. 20 minutes played and the citizens were immediately on the back foot. The first half saw little in the way of any further attack. It was the second half that sparked a glorious revival by the citizens. A corner from Chris Mason eventually yeah! found Dunford, who somehow placed an equaliser. The emphasis was with City now, but pushing for a winner left gaps at the back, and Winchester City were fortunate when the Moneyfields number seven was caught offside on 82 minutes. The best from Winchester was still to come. Q 90 minutes. Good play in the midfield allowed Jamie White to finish and win the game for the Citizens. Winchester City's 118th league goal and Jamie White's 41st. That's how it finished. A victory, three points and a decent performance. Coupled with Bermonton's 3-1 loss to Christchurch, leaves the Citizens 12 points clear. This is Aaron Summers for Winchester News Online. Now, while the win all team are usually working hard, this week we took a break from the newsroom to show our semi-professional sides and how not to hit the win on woodwork. Aaron Summers, left midfield for Barcelona and England. Oh, 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 oh. Henry and Tip, I'm fried kickles. Lee Jarvis, Aaron Summers loves wind noise. <laughs> Go on. 
Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I play football in a cardigan. <laughs> Tom Morgan should be in the newsroom right now, but I'm going to hit that bar and then I'm going to toodle off. <laughs> oh! 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 George Burridge, ball of steel. Oh, Graham Marshall, he stay classy, Winchester. <laughs> you and Kenroll, I'm better at video games. <laughs> And that's all from sport. Back to you, Sarah. Thanks, George. And finally, a car that hopes to break the world land speed record was in Southampton this past week. The team behind the project hopes it will inspire young people into the fields of science and engineering. Daniel McCrell has more. Faster than a bullet. That's the hopes of the British-led team behind the Bloodhound, SSC. The supersonic car will be looking to break the world land speed record by reaching 1,000 miles per hour. The same team broke the record in 1997 at 763 miles per hour, which broke the sound barrier. But they are now looking to take it a step further. The more I've understood the engineering, and I understand a huge amount about it now, the more I know that we're going to be successful. To see a car that's like those kind of uh, dimensions, that long and yet so sleek, um, yeah, it was just jaw on the floor time. It was brilliant. A bloodhound driving experience has allowed members of the public to get a taste of what challenges driver Andy Green will face when reaching such huge speeds. The aim is to finish construction by the end of this year with sights set on breaking the record in South Africa at the start of 2013. Danny McCrell, Winchester News Online, Southampton. That's all for this week. With more award-winning news, log on to our website at winall.co.uk. From us all, goodbye. <laughs>